Hello everyone, this is James here from James Net Productions with another Logic tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you the best way, in my opinion, to edit guitar DIs with minimal flex time or stretching in Logic Pro X. Nowadays, especially in some of the metal subgenres, having very tightly edited guitars is the key to creating that polished metal mix that meets the audience's expectations. Tightly edited guitars is how you get that punchy, in-your-face breakdowns that make you want to smash the shit out of that table in front of you and punch a mother hole in the f Okay, I got a little bit carried away there, but you got the idea. Most people record guitar DIs and then reamp them through a real amp or an amp sim. So whether you're an audio engineer or a guitarist, you'll most likely be working with guitar DIs a lot. Now, I know that some people like to edit the guitar DIs by stretching, or flex time in Logic's terms, but as an audio engineer myself, I always find stretching to leave some kind of artifacts that become a lot more audible after going through the amp, especially when the guitar DIs are heavily edited throughout the entire song. They just really add up. And for that reason, I always stay away from flex time as much as possible, even though sometimes I do need to use that. And in here, I want to show you how you can quickly edit your guitar DIs with minimal stretching. First, there are a few key commands that you need to set up. Go to Logic Pro X, key commands, edit. And now search for drag mode. What we're looking for is the no overlap and the X fade. You want to assign these two commands to shortcuts that you can easily access. For me is Shift Z and Shift X. Next, search for trim region. What we're looking for is the trim region end to next region and trim region start to previous region. You'll also want to assign these to shortcuts that you can easily access as well. For me, I've assigned them to brackets. Next, make sure the background grid lines are on so you can see the lines here. And you also need to assign the secondary mouse tool to the scissor. The point is that you can use the left click as a pointer tool, which will allow you to click and drag audio regions around. And you can have the other tool as a split tool, which will allow you to split audio region wherever you want. Lastly, be sure to have a drum track so you can listen to how the edits sound with the drums. The drum track will also help you see whether or not the guitar's DIs are on time. Depending on the tempo of the track, you will want to set the division to 1 over 16 like this or 1 over 30 second if the tempo is slower. The grid lines will help you see whether or not the DIs are on time when you're editing. Right here, I have a pair of metal rhythm guitar DIs and I'm using an M sim on them. Then this is my drum track. Let's take a listen what it sounds like. As you can hear, this is the very typical breakdown found in many modern metal songs. And you want to make sure that the guitars are on time and in sync with the drums so the breakdown can sound super badass. Now let me show you how to edit the guitar DIs without flex time. Let's zoom in a little bit here. As you can see, the first note is fine. But the second note over here, you can see that this is a little bit too uh, early. Then this one is a little bit too late. We're going to bring up the scissors tool on your mouse and split at the pick attack, not at the transient, but at the pick attack, like so. Once you split it, you drag it over like that. Make sure the snap is off and drag is no overlap. So now, once you have that, you can use the key command trim region start the previous region, which you set up at the beginning of the video, like so, and now they are connected. Same thing with the second one, cut over here at the pick attack and drag it over. There we go. And let's take a look at the next one over here. This one is a little bit too early, but that's fine. But this one over here is very late. So we're going to do the same thing. Use a scissors tool, cut it and drag like that, cut and drag. Go over to the next one here. As you can see, this is a little bit too early. Split and drag and use the key command like so. This method is very fast once you are familiar with it. And now let's take a listen. Sounds good to me so far. Let's keep editing for a little bit more. Let's take a look at the next one here. As you can see, this one is very early, so we're going to do the same thing. Split and drag. Split 
and drag. There we go. Go to the next one. This is late as well. Split and drag. Split and drag. The reason why you don't want snap is that if you have snap enabled, you won't be able to split wherever you want. It will just split at the grid. There you go. Now let's take a listen. As you can hear, there's a little bit of artifacts here. We can either fix it by dragging the transition point or we can use the crossfade. Let's see which one is best. So if I drag it over here like that. This is better, but you can still hear a little bit of hiccup. So I'm going to enable the drag to X fade. And I'm going to drag this one a little bit over. This one as well. And let's see what it sounds like. This is much better. Let's try overlapping a little bit more. That sounds good to me. And there you go. That's how to edit the guitar DIs without using flex time in Logic. It's essentially a slip editing workflow that I adopted from Cubase and Reaper to Logic, since Logic doesn't really have a slip tool for the mouse. I hope you learned something from this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I will be responding every single day. Consider subscribing for more music production content and see you next time.